How y'all doing? How y'all feeling? It's me, Lamar Kendall, and welcome back to my channel. It's Lamar Kendall time. Okay. If you're new here, thanks for tuning in and don't forget to subscribe. If you're a returning viewer, I appreciate you so much. You guys keep me going, so thanks for the support. Disclaimer, these are my thoughts and my opinions, and I hope to be a vessel for someone to breathe, to let their wall down, and to live. How many of you guys know what today is? You, 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 you. If you don't know what today is, today is World Mental Health Day. What better way to keep up Naming's Corner with speaking on mental health? World Mental Health Day is on October 10th every year, and it is a day where we make Mental Health Day priority. People are bringing awareness and starting conversations, like what I'm doing right now on my channel. I represent, uh, as a gay black man, I represent a group of people who sometimes silence themselves, sometimes write themselves off. Sometimes don't know where to turn to. That's why I'm talking about this on my channel today because I'm, I want to share with you guys my experience with mental health and also answer some questions that you guys have asked me. I just ultimately remember always being shy and timid and not really open up about what I feel and what I'm going through. That's always been something that's been a part of me since I was a kid. Like, I would go to school and <laughs> they could tease me for, like, why do I talk like that? Why do I walk like that? Why do I act like that? And I've always remained resilient. Even if I went home crying or went home feeling sad about it, I always suffered from some form of mental health, whether it was depression or anxiety. As black men, <laughs> we're told to be tough and throw your emotions on a back burner. And ultimately, that didn't really work for me or don't work for me as an adult. I remember my cousins coming over to tighten us up because we were a little bit, we were frail, me and my brother, and we were just so quiet and shy and to ourselves but that doesn't mean that we needed to be toughened up or to be treated differently from how we present ourselves in the world I feel like and this is my opinion I feel like when our parents were raised a certain way is and I'm in my 30s and when our parents are raised a certain way and then they raise us they're doing the best that they could regardless of how good or bad that may be or however that may affect us later on in life you may have realized like oh damn my mom did yell a lot or damn my mom did put me on punishment and give me whoopings but how was that showing up in your adult life and a lot of things show up in my adult life for example just this past week um i had a rough emotional end of the week i just was feeling unfulfilled and feeling like my spirit is bothered and like where's my life going and am I doing what I'm am I doing what I should be doing I never saw myself being a nine to five type of guy so am I dumbing down my creativity and what my spirit yearns just to be a responsible and practical adult in life like I really was having and have been having these thoughts for a while now and feeling like, why am I at my job? I should just quit my job. I should just do YouTube full time and make my songs and write my freestyles and do those things that make me feel good and feel happy. But what happens when 
I'm not I'm not being a responsible adult and I'm not making any money like I can't pay my bills so therefore I, I can't take those necessary moments off to take care of my mental health so I was just feeling like my back was against the wall I didn't have much sleep um, I've been missing some things and missing people and all of that really just bothered me and affected me to where at the end of my work day at Friday it took for my boss to give me a brownie for me to feel better. And I'm just like, what type of childish mess is this? Like, why did it take for me to go through majority of this day just an emotional wreck and going off and just acted off impulse? And I've been feeling like impulsive these past few weeks, this past couple of months. I've just been feeling like I need to do something drastic. And... This, it brings me back around to what I was saying that we as black men are taught to just be tough and to not speak on how we feel and what we're going through when for me, I need to speak on what I'm feeling and what I'm going through because if I'm not, then I lash out, I act out and that's basically what was happening. And in, I noticed in those moments where I'm having an episode, I can't get through to myself and I know the things to do. Like I've written a self-help journal, consciously aware of my energy and those around me. I'm wearing the t-shirt, consciously aware of my energy and those around me. And just because I'm consciously aware of my energy and those around me doesn't necessarily mean that I have all of the answers. If that doesn't exempt me from having bad days, it doesn't exempt me from Retort into what I know how to do and sometimes in those moments we Just act out how we feel when ultimately we need the hey, are you okay? Or hey, let me give you a hug or hey, let me pull you to the side and let me talk to you and I had a conversation like that and I'm so appreciative for this person for having this conversation with me because like I like I was saying sometimes in those moments when we're going through it it's hard to talk to ourselves when the voices and the volume in our head is just so loud and we can't break through and you just have all of these things happening and now you're reacting to your environment and I need to allow myself to have grace. That conversation had me realize that I need to allow myself to have grace. I need to let my wall down. I've become so guarded and so protected of my energy and of my space and of my solitude that I'm not even realizing I'm shutting people out unintentionally. I'm not even realizing that I'm being standoffish. I'm not even realizing that as friendly as a person as I am and as caring and giving of a person that I am, I will drop everything to be there for those that I love and I'm not even being there for myself so I really do have to speak on how I feel and get those thoughts and those feelings out whether it be writing in my self-help journal or whether that be writing in my personal journal or meditating these are the things that I realized over the years that I've tried throughout the years that helped me with my mental health, working out. And there's this book called Overcoming Anxiety, Worry, and Fear. And it is a self-help book. All of these, all of these like papers in here, post-its in here, and are chapters that really helped me. And I and you think that you could read something like this once and it'll help you and you know all of the answers, you know how to get through everything that you're going through. And you really should continuously do the work to heal. And that's where I always fall with keeping myself consistent with doing those things that make me happy. Because we, I get so caught up and we as people and adults get so caught up with living the day-to-day -day life, with taking care of ourselves, taking care of our kids. Or not even necessarily taking care of ourselves, but taking care of everyone around us, taking care of the things that we need to do for ourselves and not ultimately checking in with ourselves. So that's why I'm bringing back Lammy's Corner 
to my channel because I feel like it's very crucial and beneficial as a people to bring the conversation, especially as black people, to bring the conversation around mental health and not say, oh, that's Mooka and she crazy or that's Puka and he wilding out. Maybe he needs to go get a shot or some liquor or smoke a blunt because those things don't ultimately help us in the long run. They help us in the moment to help us get through what we're going through, but in the long run, it's really not doing us any good if you're not allowing yourself to feel what you need to feel, to cry, to let go, and to heal. And that's what I did on Saturday. I didn't do anything but just lay in here, lay around, cry, watch TV, allow myself to feel like a kid. Like, it's crazy. We are adults. I'm an adult. But you still have to feed your your child like self. And with me decorating my apartment and doing these things and going outside and taking walks, like that's me feeding the little Lamar inside of me. I want to share with you guys that there's an app called I Am. With the I Am app, you receive notifications throughout the day of affirmations that help you get through your day. Um, the affirmation that they sent me for today was, I am choosing to prioritize my mental health. And that's something that I always drop the ball on, choosing what to, what to make important on a day-to-day -day basis. But with this app, it helps me. And I need to realize that journaling, meditating, reading this daily, doing the work daily and consistently is something that like really helps me with my mental health and, and being active, excuse me, and being productive and working out. Let's get into the questions part of this segment. Do you ever feel like you're not living to your fullest? Yes, I often feel like I'm not living to my fullest because I feel like I expect so much of myself. I drift so much for myself that it often hinders me from doing because I ultimately don't know which way to turn, if that makes any sense. So sometimes I feel like I'm not living to my fullest and then I'm just coasting on by and I'm floating. You ever feel lost? I feel like that's kind of like the same question. But yeah, I do feel lost. I feel lost often. I feel like, where's my life going? Um, am I am I meant to am I meant to do this? Am I meant to teach? Am I meant to lead? Am I meant to be an educator? Am I meant to just be someone who is not being a creative person? Because I always felt like I was I was meant to just be like a creative person, not have a regular nine to five type of job. Do you ever feel like you're a good person and you would drop anything to be there for those you love? Yes, yes, and yes. Yes, I've done those things. Yes, I've gave my all. Yes, I've dropped everything for those who I love. But I wasn't doing that for myself. Do you get scared about your life? Yes, I get scared about my life. I often wonder, am I making the right choices to better myself? Am I... Am I making the right decisions? Will I ever get to do those things that fulfill me and bring me happiness? I'm always in a battle with being a responsible adult and living practical, or should I just quit my job and do YouTube full time and, and write my songs and write my raps and, and do these videos and do the things that bring me happiness? I'm always battling with that. And I feel like when I'm not allowing myself the time to do those things, like my hobbies that make me happy. It's when I have moments like last week where I feel like F this ish. I don't wanna be here, why am I here? I need to quit this job. And just being impulsive. And <laughs> feeling like I need to just do something, acting off my emotion, and that's not always good. What are the challenges you face with mental health? Self-sabotage, as much as I could talk myself into something, I could talk myself out of it. For example, with doing this video, I had those thoughts of, who am I? Why should I do this? Like, no one is going to listen to me. No one is going to watch this video. But 
there was a part of me that just got up and was like, you know what, do this video. Being so guarded is another challenge that I face because I'm so much in here and worried about what people are going to perceive and the optics of things when I shouldn't even really care. I mean, there's a time and a place for everything. Like, let's not be ghetto at work. Let's keep it professional. But I'm often here instead of being in the moment. And that's something that I guess I developed as a defense mechanism to just dream. Coming off standoffish is another challenge that I face because like I was saying, I'm, I'm so in here that I'm not realizing that on the outside. And everyone looking in, and how they're perceiving my behavior is that I'm being standoffish or I'm being cold or I'm being aloof. And in my mind, it's I'm being protective, I'm being guarded. Oh, Lamar, like, this person or go this way or, or don't you know don't say this or don't do that it's gotten to the point where I'm really not having fun like my life is boring like I don't know when that I become such a go to work go to school come home type of person I've always went out and had a little bit of fun so decorating my apartment and doing these videos and doing my Whatever that bring, makes me happy and bring me happiness is something that I got to do. Like, it's something that I got to do to allow myself to be happier and not get so caught up with the mundane and the routine of things. Another challenge that I face with mental health is not believing in myself or my abilities because I'm seeking validation because I've never had that keep it going type of thing. I've always felt like I was taught for my family to hear me and to support me and accept me and it's not even as far as my sexuality it's just with the things that I wanted to do I often felt like wow growing up my sisters both went to school and got their degree and here I am I want to be an entertainer I want to dance I want to sing and I don't know how to show up and share that with out me feeling like oh you need to stick to it you need to stick to one thing and you need you you better do it and if you don't do it you're gonna you, this gonna happen to you I feel like a lot of those things happen to a lot of us growing up and we often feel like or we often shut down and we we get robbed of those experiences to try different things and to figure out and understand who we are in life and what's our tribe in my conclusion, people, yes, we live in a time where perception needs to be perfect, where everyone needs to be on, or it needs to seem like you're doing more than what you're doing, when in actuality, that's not really the truth in how like, people really live on a day-to-day -day basis. Like, a lot of these platforms glorify the highs, and a lot of people don't really bring awareness to the lows, so therefore, our attention span for the things like mental health and the things that we're going through on a day-to-day -day basis is just like, oh, that's just another day. He wilding out. Sometimes people don't understand, or sometimes should, like people should really realize when someone is just wilding out or when someone is actually calling out for emotional help, opposed to someone just causing a scene or just doing something or trolling and doing something just because. So in conclusion, my people, keep loving, <laughs> keep doing you, be graceful, allow yourself to feel you're not alone, I'm not alone, and sometimes we, we may need someone to lean on to just talk to us in those moments when we're going through it and we don't really realize that we're going through it until we've already crashed, burned out, and caused damage that we may have no control over changing. So... Be consciously aware of your energy and those around you. And yes, being consciously aware of your energy does not mean that you know all the answers. It just means that you're aware of yourself and you are allowing yourself grace. You're allowing yourself to say, hey, y'all, I'm not feeling good today. Like, I'm going to be distant. Or if you guys don't see much of me today, it's because I'm in here. Because that's how it really was for me at work. Like, And I told them before that even happened, I'm like, if y'all see me being distant, 
or whatever, it's because I'm in here and I'm really trying to get right with myself because I know that I have to depend on myself to pull myself out of the funk. And if you're lucky and I'm lucky if we have someone who can see through the hurt and through whatever it is that you're, however it is that you're showing up in that time in your life to just reach out to you and to be a show to be right. So that's just my tidbit and my TED talk and my advice and my experience on mental health. I wish that everyone had a blessed day, a better day tomorrow. You are allowing yourself grace. And I'll see y'all next time in the next episode of Lammy's Corner on my channel, Lamar Cadell Time. It's your boy, Lamar Cadell, and I'm signing out. Bye.